Corner, presented by Jennifer. Breath of Hope, Chapter 2, Found Perch. We can't go back the way we came. Too many guards. As realized, looking around to try and remember where each tunnel led. Finally, he pointed to one of them. Come on, this way. No, wait, Rila called out. We need to get him to the roof. Why, there is no way out from there. Just, just trust me, she said, glancing at the dragon, who was trying to stand. But she could feel he was depending on her to stay upright. Ezrin frowned slightly. But why do you need to go to the roof? You may not realize it, but I'm trying to help you. At any moment now, others will be arriving, she explained. Others like me. It took a moment, but Ezrin realized what she meant. Assassins? I need to show them, Callum, to stop them. Just help me get up there. Ez looked down at Bate, who was glowing to provide some form of light. He nodded. I'll take you to the roof. Quickly, he changed his direction. Callum moaned as he walked, his legs too weak. It was too much too soon. Rila tried to encourage him. Hold on there, Callum. It's going to be all right. We're going to get you home. Home, he repeated, somewhat delirious. Where? Where's home? Zadia. I'm going to get you to Zadia. He was confused by the word. We he said, looking at Ezra and Bate as they walked on ahead. We go to... to Zadia. Before she could reply, Ezra stopped by a large wooden door in the wall and faced them. Wait here, I'll check to see if it's clear. Then he pushed the door open slightly, peeked out, and looked both left and right. After a moment, he waved them on, entering a corridor from behind another painting. As Rayla checked to make sure there weren't any guards, Callum found himself looking up and his eyes widened. The hallway, hallway was lined with windows, and each one showed a beautiful dark sky with a full moon lighting it brighter than any candle could. He called forth a moment of strength and pushed away from the moon shadow elf. He staggered towards the window until the glass stopped him. Leaning on it, he looked up, trying to say something, but all words failed him. It, it's, he managed before wincing and curling in on himself. His stomach aching and his legs buckling. Rila and Ezrin ran over to support him as he collapsed, overwhelmed and tired. Rila shook her head as she looked between him and the outside no, 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 Callum, come on, you've got to get back up. We can't stay here. I, I can't, he whimpered. I can't. Rila, he needs to rest. The elf looked around, both outside the window and inside. She knew the others would be making their moves soon. The moon was almost at its highest. They would be here soon if they weren't here already. Her window to stop this tragedy was closing, and closing fast. She looked over at the dragon as he tried to lean on the wall, Ezrin and Bay offering some comfort to him. I'll go ahead, she decided. Tell me how to get to the roof. I'll try and hold them off as lo long enough for him to recover, and when he can move, follow me. Ezrin stared at her for a moment, then nodded, pointing to the door just across from them. That door straight up. All right. She knelt down by their sides. Callum, I know you're weak, but please, when you are able, try and move. I won't be able to hold them off for long. If you want to escape this place, 
If you want to help Esrin, you need to get back up. He stared at her for a moment. She felt his desire to help. I'll, I'll try. Thank you. She turned to the young human and nodded curtly, heading up the stairs that led to the stone walkway. The moonlight shone bright and guided her. Oddly, this walkway, unlike the ones below, had no guards on it. This made her wary. She looked around with a skilled eye. You're here, she spoke to the thin air, turning around to find some hint of their location. I know you are. Rayla? She turned back and saw the lead assassin walking across the wall's battlements. His bow was strung over his back, and he looked furious at her presence. You defied me. Ran, you need to call off the mission, she begged, hands held out in hope. As he jumped down, the moonshadow elf frowned. You've lost your mind. Please, listen to me. I found something. Her voice rose a little in joy at her discovery. The dragon prince himself. That's impossible. The prince wasn't killed. He was stolen. The high mage was using him for dark magic. But the human prince and I found him. He only wants to help save... No. Humans are liars. This is a trick and a trap. Ran interrupted, unable to believe what was being said. You're a fool, Rayla. She's not a fool, came another voice, and the pair turned to face the door at the end of the walkway. Who they saw was a young, dark-skinned prince standing in the doorway alone. What she's telling you is true. Drawing his bow, Ran took aim. You made a terrible mistake. Not flinching at the aimed arrow, Ezrin turned to look back and held out his hand. Come on, Callum, it's all right. The stairs had clearly taken a lot out of the wounded dragon. He limped out, but somehow managed to look at the second elf. His eyes widened at the arrow while his tail instinctively wrapped around the human to keep him safe. Ruan gasped at the sight, amazed, and lowered his weapon. He's... he's alive? How can we take vengeance for an act that never happened? Rayla protested. You have to call it off. Rayla... You know it doesn't work that way, the leader countered. We bound ourselves. There's no other way to release. Ruan, please, there has to be another way. This is a miracle, a chance for peace. The assassin wasn't having it, and he drew his bow once more. The humans struck down the, dra the king of dragons. Justice will not be denied. Now, give me the prince. Preparing herself for a fight, Rayla drew both blades at once. Callum, Ezrin, go back. But just keep him safe, she commanded, not looking back. Ezrin frowned but helped Callum back inside the tower, just as the few clouds in the sky parted. A full moon shone down on the two elves, filling them both with elemental power. Ruan frowned as he pulled his bow apart and created two blades that resembled Rayla's. Don't do this, he almost pleaded as the power of the moon made his skin dark and transparent. I will kill you. When the same power took hold of Rayla, she smirked. Probably. Then she charged forward to clash with her long, lifelong mentor. Inside the tower, Ezrin helped Callum get all the way to the ground level and out into the courtyard. <coughs> Luckily, he found a convenient hay cart waiting by the door. With Callum exhausted once more, the human prince helped him into the cart, laying him down and covering his body with hay. Here, you can rest for a bit, but you need to stay hidden. Ezrin, the boy called out weakly. Don't worry, Bate will stay with you. Ezrin promised, taking the glow toad off his shoulder and placing him in the other boy's arm. Hold him tight and he'll keep you safe. I'm going to go talk to my dad. He smiled confidently. I'll be right back. Stay here, okay? Nodding and holding bait tight, the dragon prince closed his eyes as Ezrin covered his head and left towards his father's tower. 
Once he made it up and pushed past the guards, he quickly headed to the, for the front door. The mage's son stopped him as in his tracks. Whoa, slow down there, little prince. The king's pretty busy right now. You're not stopping me, Ezrin snapped, pushing past for the door, when suddenly it opened and the high, high mage himself stepped out, a sour look on his face. Mirren saw the child and frowned even more. You should not be here. I know what you did, the young boy declared firmly. You stole the dragon prince, hurt him, tortured him. His anger was clear, even for someone so young. We found him, and we're keeping him safe. We, Lord Viren repeated, caught by the words. Pointing at him, the prince frowned. My father will have you in shackles when he finds out about this. What makes you think he doesn't already know? Viren countered, watching the look of horror wash over the boy's face. The mage nodded to the guards. Grab him. But he's the prince. Do it! Despite trying to run, the guards grabbed the boy and held him still, while Viren looked down at him. stamping his staff on the floor for emphasis. Now, tell me, where is the dragon? I'll call out. I'll scream. Go ahead, the mage challenged, reaching into his pocket and pulling something out before crushing it in his palm. He began an enchantment, his eyes glowing bright as he spoke. The words, the carcass in his hand glowed a bright green before a smoke-like hand reached out and entered the prince's mouth. It removed a glowing yellow orb from within him. Ezrin tried to speak, but nothing came from his lips. At that moment, he realized the horrors this man could commit and how scared Callum must have been. Even when the smoke was gone, he still couldn't speak. Thank you.